So hello guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, today I'm going to be explaining how to drive a transport truck. But first, a word from our sponsor of the day. As a truck driver, I know how bad it is to be sitting on a wallet all day every day. So I have, for the longest time, kept my wallet in my front pocket, but it looks kind of funny. I've always tried to find the smallest wallet I can get away with, so when the Ridge offered me their minimalist wallet, I had to give it a shot. Look at the difference between the Ridge wallet and my previous small wallet. This wallet can hold up to 12 year cards and cash too with the included cash strap or money clip. The clip can double to hold your wallet on your sun visor too. This super cool little unit is the Forged Ember Edition and there's over 30 different styles and finishes to suit your needs. I keep my truck keys in my front pocket too and the durable finish on the Ridge Wallet keeps it from scratching and denting when they're jangling around together. It'll withstand the rolling around while doing emergency repairs under the truck too. The Ridge Wallet offers a lifetime warranty if it doesn't stand up to your needs. And if your dad collects as much stuff as my dad does, the Ridge Wallet isn't a bad idea for Father's Day. Just saying. Use the link in the description below and use the code call them all to get 15% off your own Ridge wallet. Okay, if you've never been inside the cab of a transport truck before, this is about what the cab looks like. You're going to have your shifter over here. And a whole bunch of controls and stuff, yada, yada, yada. Deal with that later. But uh, this is the actual shifter right here. And um, a transport truck can come in uh, a few different configurations for uh, shifters. Um, this one in particular is an 18 speed. It has a range selector on the front and then a gear splitter on the side both air actuated and the shift pattern normally it's actually listed on the top of the shifter right here or on the back somewhere on the dash um, but this is an aftermarket knob so it doesn't have the shift pattern but um, it basically is low one two three four High range, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, each of those gears can be split with this splitter. So you get a half gear in between each of those. So you have low, split, first, split, second, split, third split, fourth split, five split, six split, seven split, eight split. So the 18 speed is basically uh, the same kind of shift pattern as both a 13 and a nine speed, but uh, a nine speed doesn't have this splitter right here. So it's just low one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which adds up to nine gears altogether. And then a 13 speed is uh, kind of a cross between the two of them. So you have low, first, second, third, fourth, and then fifth, and then you can start splitting the gears after fifth. So you have fifth split, sixth split, seventh split, eighth split. 
Another uh, common type of transmission is called the 10 speed. And uh, it's basically the same kind of shift pattern and except instead of low gear, they call it first gear. So you have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, and 10. So the range selector and the splitter kind of work in two different ways. The range selector, you can be in a gear and flip it all around and it doesn't do anything. And you can be pulling down the road and the splitter won't do anything. Um, the range selector, you have to be in neutral before it engages or disengages. So if you're in fourth gear and go to split or go to shift to high range, it's not going to do anything until you put it back into neutral. And the same kind of deal with the splitter, except it's based off the fuel pedal. So if you're pulling down the road, you can pre-select a split gear and it's not until you let off the pedal and get back on it again that it actually drops into that gear. So if you've never driven a manual transmission before, you would only have dealt with a fuel pedal and a brake pedal. Um, manual transmissions also have a clutch pedal. And so you have throttle, brake, and clutch. Now, what makes a transport truck a little bit different than a traditional manual transmission is there's actually two different parts, uh, two different sections of the clutch pedal. You have the actual clutch disengagement, but if you keep pushing it farther, you get what's called a clutch brake. So the reason there's a clutch brake is because the transmission is non-synchroed. What that basically means is that um, in, a in a standard car transmission, you have synchro gears, so you can actually push the shifter in towards a gear and there are synchronizing uh, rings in the transmission that actually bring the transmission up to speed to match into that gear so it's a pretty seamless shift but a transport truck is uh, non-synchroed so it doesn't have those synchros to either speed up or slow down the transmission um, so when you first pu push in the clutch um, the transmission is still spinning at full speed and you'll see a lot of guys in parking lots that'll just try to jam it into a gear and it'll make a bunch of grinding noises until it clicks and you're really not supposed to do that. You're supposed to push the clutch pedal all the way down, engage the clutch brake and then you can put it into, into gear. Okay, let's move this truck. First thing you do, key on, you wait for it to go through its checks, you can hear the ABS do its thing. When you're outside the truck you can't hear it, and here I've got the fan on. Um, move the stick around, make sure you're actually in neutral, and then start it up. Now I have a load on the back right now, so we're going to start it in just low gear, okay? Now what you want to do is push the clutch down all the way to activate the uh, clutch brake. So if you, don't, if you don't do this, you just push the clutch a little bit, when you go to shift into gear, it's just going to grind. 
and you hear a bunch of people in the truck stops just whoops okay <laughs> you hear a bunch of people in the truck stops that just until it gets into gear that is a big no-no push your clutch all the way down engage the clutch brake and it just drops right in now all you do to actually move first release your brakes but you do not do not use the throttle at all when you're first starting out all you do is just let off the clutch let off the brake let off the clutch ease it in and we're moving so the proper way to shift a transmission is to double clutch between every gear shift except the splitter um, i'll explain it right now so double clutching is basically you have it in a gear your throttle on ready to shift up you release the throttle push in the clutch pull the gear into neutral release the clutch get back on the clutch and drop it into the next gear and release the clutch and get on the throttle again it's um, a little funky to try to explain like this but when you're actually moving down the highway it kind of makes sense because that middle when you're in a gear push in the clutch pop it into neutral release the clutch that actually engages the transmission and spins it up to approximately the proper speed that you're going to want for the next gear and the reason you use the clutch is it kind of softens the shift uh, in between every gear Floating gears is basically you do not use the clutch pedal outside of uh, starting and stopping the truck. 
um, you can actually pop it in between gears and uh, shift it without a clutch but it is harder on the transmission it's not exactly designed to work like that but um, it saves uh, hip and knee replacements later on in your later years <laughs> So because these gears are non-synchroed, um, when you shift, you can uh, pop it into neutral, but then you have to wait until the revs drop at exactly the right point and it'll let you into the next gear. Otherwise, it's going to grind and stuff. And when you're splitting, um, that wait time is basically cut in half. So this is how I typically go up when I'm loaded um, up through the gears. I hardly ever will use all 18 gears. Um, most, of the, most of the gears in the bottom range, you don't use the splitter unless you need to in heavy traffic and stuff or climbing a hill. Um, so I will show you, this is uh, an example of my typical shift pattern, fully loaded, 140,000 pounds in this truck. So I start in low with the splitter up and then immediately go to first gear with the splitter normal because the jump from low to first is actually fairly significant. So having it split on the low going to regular first is actually a manageable jump and it's pretty nice. So split fourth gear because um, it makes the shift to fifth nicer. And then from here, every gear gets split. go through all 18 gears at once um, depending on if you're empty loaded or bobtail you can uh, skip gears depending on your situation so this here is going to be the empty shift pattern so we got two with the splitter going to four A five with the splitter. I can actually kick. 
get get to seventh. It's a bit of a step. Just because we're going uphill. And then usually I just go to eighth and then split up to uh, eight high. Once we're up to highway speed, well, we're not getting up to highway speed. Another trick you can do while you're bobtailing is actually shift with the brake uh, with the Jake brakes on, so it um, it takes the wait period out in between gears, and you can jam it into uh, uh, much higher gear really quickly. Um, you just want to watch out if you're doing that though because it's it's really tough on the equipment and if you don't time it exactly perfect then you you drop the transmission down or you drop the engine down to no revs in no time and you have to fish for that uh, that perfect rev match again so it's a little difficult but it it can be done now you notice I came to a complete stop with uh, the clutch in and now I shift to the gear and here we're going to do it same pattern but Jake in between each of the points and it drops you into the gear a lot quicker now here we'll go straight from 7th to 4th for a corner same deal again, except pole gears. Whoops. Didn't quite get the jakes to activate that time. There, I just missed a gear. And when you miss a gear, you get off the throttle or on the throttle, depending on if you're high or low of the gear, and try to find it again. Other points I want to make on this is um, the ideal RPM range to shift for most trucks most newer trucks they say um, 1200 to 1500 RPM is where you want to shift on my truck in particular um, with the uh, single turbo setup and the way the engine is, it likes between 1400 and 1700. Um, each truck is a little bit different and you get to learn the sweet spots and where they do like to shift. Like right now, I'm, uh, I gotta drop a gear. Another quick point to make is that uh, they're non-synchronized gears, so even though I'm doing my best, there's still probably going to be a little bit of grinding just trying to find the gear. That happens literally all the time. It is A-OK -okay to grind a couple gears, like it's it's just part of the game, you know? Um, so so don't worry if you if you grind a couple gears here and there. You will also every once in a while miss a gear like you go i don't know for example four go to five but you don't actually catch five and you end up grinding it and being neutral and then you're trying to rev match to find where that gear is and then you end up the truck slows down and you have to find a lower gear um that's a-okay -okay too like it's it's gonna happen uh sometimes if it's bad enough if you're in the uh lowest gears you might actually have to come to a complete stop and start all over again um, which is fine too it's just part of what happens you can also what i kind of call neutral a gear where you're in a gear and you go to say you're shifting down you're in the high splitter and you want to shift down and you give it throttle but it's not actually enough throttle to catch the next gear and then it drops down the revs go to 
idle basically, but you hear a bunch of grinding sounds out of the stick. That is uh, not good for the transmission. You want to either pop it out back in neutral and find a gear again, or bring up the revs to get into that other gear. Um, you just don't want to leave it in uh, the neutral gear um, for too long. I will show you what that neutral gear is. We'll try dropping a gear and try to catch the next gear lower, but I'll intentionally stop short. I won't give it enough fuel, so it'll pop out of the 18th gear, I guess, but it won't exactly go into the 17th gear, and the revs will drop into this neutral zone while you're still in the gear. Whoops. No. Hold on. Nope. All right. This time for sure. That is, you don't want to leave it in that gear, in that neutral zone for too long. Because it's bad for the transmission. So when you're coming into a corner, you're shifting down all the gears and you're wondering how fast you should be going, going around a corner. Well, usually rule of thumb, fourth gear. That's the gear you want to be in when you're taking a 90 degree corner. And if you're wondering what speed you, um, want to go into low range it's right at 20 kilometers an hour is kind of your cutoff speed so one two three four that's all under 20 kilometers an hour and then once you hit around that or over then you're into five six seven eight yada 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 but if you if you're downshifting and you end up missing a rev match and you're in neutral and you're trying to figure out what gear you're in or what gear you want to be in 20 kilometers an hour low range fourth gear so downshifting with the transport truck is a little more uh, interesting because the transmission is not synchronized so you have to um, double clutch and rev match at the same time you're dropping gears so say you're in your last gear um, and you need to shift to seventh so you're uh, coming down you're on the brakes you're slowing down and you let off the brake clutch in neutral clutch out rev clutch back in into the next gear down and clutch out and brake. Now this happens a whole lot faster than this because you're probably brake like that. That's a double clutch and that's about the speed you do it. If you're going without double clutching then you kind of have to pop it out of gear with the throttle so you give a little bit of a blip to pop it 
and then rev match to get it into the next gear. Blip and there, blip and there. Um, oftentimes when I'm slowing down fairly quick, you can actually heel toe your, um, your two, two pedals over here. And so what that means is basically you're on the brakes and then you use your heel to give it throttle. Now it takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, it uh, it saves switching feet all the time and you have more consistent control on the brakes. But you have to watch out that you don't ride the brakes all the time because those drum brakes will heat up quick and uh, yeah, that can just lead to some sticky situations. In an emergency situation though, it is a-okay to just hammer on the brake pedal. Don't worry about downshifting because every time you lift up off that brake pedal, you're losing a little bit of distance of your brake travel. Um, it heats up your brakes real quick to just use the foot pedal, but in an emergency situation, it's the fastest way to come down to a stop. Don't worry about the gears. Okay. A couple points I want to make on downshifting. Um, when you're downshifting all the gears using the jakes, I almost always turn off the jakes by the time I hit fourth gear because um, the lower the gear, the more torque that the jakes are actually putting in. And in anything below fourth gear, it gets really jumpy and kind of hard to control and the truck's bouncing all over the place. And uh, if I'm coming up to a complete stop, I'll usually engine brake or jake brake within the gears down to about fourth gear um, and then clutch in and just brake that extra little distance. Um, like just foot brake the extra distance. Um, you don't want to use the jakes over 1700 RPM. Um, like there's a lot going on on the head of the engine when you're using the brakes and things can get broken if you're revving too high. So I try never to go over 1700 RPM. Um, when you're jumping full gears with the jakes on, it usually goes from 1700 and I bring it down to about 13 or 1400 and then you can drop a full gear. If you're jaking half gears, like splitting every gear going down, you can usually get 1700 down to 1500, split the gear, and then it'll go up to 1700 again and down. Um, when you are coming up to an intersection, this past example where I just jake down and I'm parked, I don't need to be in a gear again. Um, when you're slowing down to an intersection, say you're in clutch brake say you're in fourth gear when you get to the intersection and you stop then you leave the clutch in shift over to your gear and that way the transmission you want to leave it in gear 
clutch in until the truck is actually stopped so it stops the transmission at the same time and then you can find your beginning gear easier that way. Unless you're stopped for a train or something, you pretty much always leave it in gear with the clutch in. So if you're waiting at a red light at an intersection, you're braking, you're down in fourth gear, you put it into first or low, whatever you feel like it, and you wait there until the, uh, until the light turns green, until you start rolling again. If it's more than a few minutes, yeah, you can leave the clutch out and into neutral but um, generally you want to keep it in a gear of some sort. All right, so I think that was about as a comprehensive list as I can think of to uh, shift an 18 speed transmission, drive a transport truck. If I missed anything, uh, let me know down in the comments. And if there's anything you wanna see in like a future video or something like that, let me know as well. Um, until then, I'll catch you at the next one.